Hey, so I'm going to take this drum loop that sounds pretty good, and I'm going to edit it to make our own custom drum pattern, all from a loop. Can you believe it? Wow, it's going to be so cool. It's going to be so neat. We're going to give it a go right now. Let's go. This isn't going to work for all loops, but it's going to work for this one. You want to know why? It's because uh, you can see the drums really clearly. It's not a very busy loop. The kicks and snares and cymbals are all right here. We can see them as the dibs and the bibs. And I'm just going to go ahead and edit them. Check it out. Look how easy. I would really love an open hi-hat. I don't know if we have, I like a kick with an open hi-hat. Oh, we have a cymbal, and we can kind of fake a cymbal by choking it like that. Make it sound like a tss, like a hi-hat, but uh, because uh, we're like cutting off the end of that. Oh, too much, a little too sharp. There we go, that'll probably do it. Sounds weird, doesn't it? Give it a little bit more juice. Whoa. Do, 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 do. I would like a lot of kicks there, please. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Ba, ba, ba. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Still getting used to Ableton Live 10's new cookie zones. It's not the technical name for it, cookie zone, but you click on the top of the waveform to select it, and the bottom of the waveform to this kind of select it. So, see that? It turns into a hand. So, uh, is my character still alive? Okay, awesome. Uh, oh, cool. I need, uh, I need the different kick for this. That's what's going to really sell it, I think, is having that symbol in there, too. So I'm keeping a mental note of which of these kick samples um, have a symbol on them or not. You can hear that tss, tss on some, but not on others. And you can even see, like, the ones that have the kind of long tail here. That's the tss sound of the cymbal. And there's, there's a couple kick drums. Uh, where is it? I don't have that, like this guy right here. And um, so when I want a cymbal on the hit, I just use that. And then we're kind of just collaging the loop. We're just, like, taking the loop um, and using what we have here. This is actually uh, funny enough. This is where cut in cut man comes from is the cutting and pasting that we're doing with this loop. Uh, I used to work in a recording studio and one of my clients um, gave me the nickname cut man because I was always cutting and pasting real quick like. <laughs> yeah, so there's the backstory. But 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 God, this is weird. We're going to have to groove this to make it like nice, but I'm I don't I don't want to do that right now. So I'm just going to scoop this playhead back a little bit. This guy's got to come back too. Maybe not as much. This guy came back too much. Two kicks. This is nice and simple. Get, get out of crazy town. Go back to chill zone. Nope. That's crazy town, man. We're gonna go to chill zone. Population us. And look at this. You're thinking like, man, how can my beat be cool? You just take a bit and you reverse it. That's just sound wild. Uh, there's two issues here. Uh, one, I hear a pop. And two, this gets too loud. So I'm going to adjust the pop. I just simply just, oh gosh, my little guy is over this parameter. Here, let me 
reveal it for you. Can you see it now? The little thing? Oh man, I don't have a camera. I can't point with my finger. It's that. <laughs> oh, and look, and Cutman's all... Needs to go to the chiropractor, man. What's going on with this? What's going on with this? It's probably because I'm a shit. I'm shifting around in my chair. So I'm producing. Uh, okay, so there. I put this little meter down, make it a little less loud, and then I'm going to just check it out. Cut out that little area that's popping, and then I'm going to add these little fades. Just a little bit. And uh, the pop's going to be gone. And, oh, let's put the grid back on, and then we're going to take some like, kicky boy, kicky, kicky boy. And this last bit is, as the loop was written, is really close to what I want. I want boom, boom, ka, boom, ba. The second kick has no, has less them. That one is really like. Boom, boom, gap, doo -doo. And we don't want this to be a hit. I want it to be a kick. Oh, and then I'm getting a little wild. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard left, right to do that. Boom, boom. <laughs> this part is so wild at this tempo. I really like it. Let's go get that reversey that I made before. And we're almost done. Yeah, and and I want this beat to be super simple for this part. It's really about the melody here. Um, so I'm gonna tell my beat like, "Yo, chill out, beat." So let me get a full four measures, please. Oh, you know what? I can just do it like this. I'll just take the loopy point and just do this. This might mess me up later, but it's done now. Oh yeah, that's messed up. This is a good old beat. Yo, and we did it, look at that. And look, now it's our full, like, 40 seconds. How many bars is this? This is 16, almost 16 bars. So we took a little, what is it, two, four? We took a little four bar loop and we made it a totally custom drum pattern for uh, 16 bars. And all we did is we, one, selected a, a loop where you can clearly see the drums. That's like the easiest indicator. And then we just rode through listening to uh, our sample in this case, but if you know, we were writing for original song, we'd be listening to the melody or the bass or you know, whatever. And uh, we'll save it later. And look, we now have this custom cool drum pattern, hooray. I've already got some like side chain set up. Ooh, man, we were excited at the beginning of this beat, huh? Yeah, screw that, this is not that kind of song. Oh yeah, and this is an important part of my process, is uh, multiple passes. Whoa, that was cool. Wow, this, this beat really like evolved over time.
fine. But da 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 Ba da 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 And look, we have this old, uh, we have our own custom beat. Let's, this beginning section's rough. Yeah, see this bub bub. I can't do bub bub. There's just too many here. Like we don't need that many. We do. It's this one. And I'm gonna replace it with this. Whatever this is. I think it's a symbol. And we don't need this either. I was so excited about the kicks early on before I really like felt the beat and figured out what we needed. There we go. Oh no. I like what I'm doing, but I don't like how I did it. So let's take a look here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and align these kick drums to be with the percussion up here. And I'm hoping what that's gonna do is make it sound more natural and less like, oh, you put a beat in there and it was didn't belong. Nope. No, ma'am, it sounds bad. Uh, let's pull them back to after. This would be interesting if this works. And if this doesn't work, I'm just gonna get rid of them. Yeah, it doesn't, all right, I'm not, I'm not laboring over this. And I'm just putting back whatever, whatever was in this, uh, whatever was in this uh, sample originally. And that's one of the beautiful things about live is we're cutting and chopping up all this whole thing. But if anything sucks, like, you know, we can just, I'll show you again, be like, oh man, that sucks. I'm just gonna cover it up with whatever was there and there it's gone. Yeah, see, that works just fine. Um, now, one more thing I'm gonna do. Oh, I'm just gonna save when I'm done. I'll save when I'm done. Uh, I'm going to, I don't know if I have to pull the whole thing out like this, but I'm gonna. And I'm gonna extract the groove. This is such a key part of making a beat sound good. In my opinion, if you're working with samples, or actually, no, I work in compositions and stuff too. Um, we extract the groove from whatever is the most rhythmic Thing, whatever has the feel in the way I look at it, whatever has the feel of the song, and for uh, in this case it's that drum loop, uh, and we are going to apply it over to our sample. And that's what it's going to do. Uh, let me mute it. It gives it just a different kind of feel. I don't know if you could tell the difference. Uh, it's pretty noticeable in the fact that it just, if it works, it's just gonna make the beat sound better, like right away. And if uh, you groove it and it, and it, the beat does not sound better and you're like wondering, is this better or is this worse? It's probably worse <laughs> and you should uh, not use it. But on certain, on certain things, it, it really uh, can tie it all together. Let's listen. If I wanna bring down the amount of grooving, I'm gonna use this value up here. Yeah. Oh, and here, I'm gonna just bring up the bass in the sample because I don't have bass. This is a sidechain multiband compressor. So I'm boosting the bass in the original sample, but then I'm also ducking it when the kick comes in. This is a special technique I kind of figured out on doing DJ Cutman Volume 4, and it's really awesome. I'm gonna cut off this little subby, sub, the subby boys we don't need. Give a little more meat. I'm gonna bring the sample volume down now that I've boosted some stuff. And here, look, we'll do a little, we'll throw a little limiter on the master. Actually, I have a preset I really like for these chill beats like this. It's called Made for Beats Extra Wide. And I also have a compressor I really like, so I'll show you all my secrets. This SSL comp from Waves. Put the these things pointing at each other. Leave this on four, but just a like slow attack, fast release. Now we got the drums really kind of 
even further dictating the feel of the track. Bring this down a little just to give it, it's kind of crushing it. And here, let's just even things out just a little bit more with this uh, multi band on the master. This is a preset basic four band punch and balance. If you watch my other videos, I use it all the time. I can select everything and then turn this way down. Then, uh, Turn this up. Is the character's mouth going ham now that the track is loud? I bet it is. <laughs> yeah, he's just going. Okay. All right, cut man. We're almost done. Yeah. I can tell the high end's a little higher than it needs to be. I have this nice plugin from Isotope called Tonal Balance Control. It's going to show us how our track stacks up to the expected, um, basically mainstream sound. And I can see, oh, my low mids are messed up because I'm a producer and my, and I've produced my low mids to be messed up. Also, there's like no big thick bass in this tune. I can boost the low mids right here, or I could be a good engineer and lower my other stuff. It's all right. It's well within the range. And I already actually boosted this kind of stuff in the actual sample. I, I could tell it was low. And let me just do this last little thing that I think is so important. Uh, because we're working with a, a chiptune or a Final Fantasy synth track, there's not a lot of high-end really bright stuff, but in the drones, there's a lot of those high symbols, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little bit of out, and this is such a powerful trick. So it's not as bright, here it is before. And then I'm gonna turn off those highs. And if you're listening on like a phone or laptop speakers, you maybe not can hear this, but maybe you can. But basically I'm taking some of the very high end out, and you're probably like, cut me, why would you do this? Why would you do this thing? It just makes the song sound like there's not as much song but uh, by making the high ends kind of consistent on everything so that the drums aren't sparklier than the sample, it's actually gonna make the track sound like more good. Check it out, I'll, I'll bring the sample back in and then I'll take the high end out and you'll hear the drums just all of a sudden start to sound more natural. Maybe I'm a little aggressive over here. See, it doesn't really sound like the drums are missing that high end that they are. They just kind of, now they're kind of like playing this by the same rules that the sample is. And we're getting, we're, I'm cutting at 13K. It's like, we're not really getting a little bit of a lot. I can even just cut it out of the mids and leave a tiny bit of it. I don't like that high, none of it. I don't want any of it. See, it sounds really natural, right? And we could like use some tricks to make the high end and the sample higher if we wanted to match it that way. I don't feel like we need to though. And look, if we wanted to address that little hump here, if we're like, oh gosh, but 300 hertz, we're not getting enough booty in that bass. You can go and add a booty in with an EQ like this. Say booty, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's your booty bass. There's the real booty bass. There's the booty bass. Yeah, babies. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope the cut man didn't die during the process. He looks okay. Yeah. Well, if you like this video, or if you're on the live stream, 
Uh, be sure to tell me that you like it, because I like really live on encouragement these days. I've been a little lonely, and well, lonely not the right word, but like hermity. Like I've been a little bit of a hermit since this week in Chiptune ended, so trying to be out there more, and maybe this guy will help me do it. Uh, yes. All right, thank you. Uh, I have to go um, do some work. That's not as cool, so goodbye. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. There's, there I am.